Fuel is critical to every space mission, especially for Starship's long-term goals of reaching the Moon and Mars. With ascent and landing mastered, SpaceX now moves toward full reusability, essential for these ambitious journeys. One of the most important developments for these missions is the orbital refueling system. So how will SpaceX refill Starship? What challenges await them? Let's find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Flights 1 to 5 demonstrated major milestones, successful liftoffs, stage separation, re-entry, and most recently, catching Super Heavy with Mechazilla and vertically landing the ship. It was an incredible and memorable journey for SpaceX in one and a half years. There were still problems, but everything was gradually improved through thousands of changes after each flight. And as I said, when the frame for the flight, flying up and returning, was initially built, this was the time for SpaceX to aim for further goals. But what makes refueling so crucial? Refueling is critical as Starship consumes nearly all of its fuel reaching orbit. For longer missions like the Moon or Mars, additional fuel will be needed to extend its range and ensure a safe return. This is where the refueling system becomes vital. Just recently, a tweet by the user Alex highlighted Flight 5's success and hinted at what's next for SpaceX. SpaceX demo of Starship's ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer next year will likely entail twin Starship launches and booster recoveries at Starbase. Responding to his tweet, Musk emphasized, Orbital refilling is an essential technology for making life multiplanetary. He also said previously, Orbital refilling is essential to get serious tonnage to Mars and Moon. This is indeed true when we look at the unique features of Starship. With its huge size and thrust, it can carry a lot of payloads. Future Starship was designed with more than 200 tons of payload carrying 100 people, can bring back tons of samples instead of a few kilograms and more. Those are potentials that no other rocket can match. But in return, it'll consume a lot of fuel. For example, on the journey to the moon, Starship will need a lot of fuel to approach, land, and then leave. Then it may also cover the return to Earth. Or on the Mars mission, with the closest distance of about 62.07 million kilometers, it'll consume a lot of fuel for the processes like the moon, especially on the first missions when SpaceX cannot immediately produce fuel on this planet. Right now, we can see that SpaceX is on the right track. After the recent successes, shortly, around early next year, SpaceX will take the step of catching the ship, opening the era of full reusability. Once they do this, they will really start building the refilling system. The importance of Flight 5 was also emphasized a lot at the International Astronautical Congress of 2024. According to many comments, this will be an important premise for SpaceX to build the refilling system and produce Starship HLS, or Human Landing System, important factors for Artemis 3. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson had some compliments. And so, just yesterday, SpaceX had the uh, very successful uh, fifth launch as they developed this very large rocket that has about 16 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. Uh, and this was another one of the steps in the iteration of developing that. I think you saw as a result of Sunday's test of SpaceX and its big rocket that they are moving along very well, and that will determine, ultimately, the timing for the landing of Artemis 3 on the moon. As of Sunday's test, it was right on the mark. They are right on making the benchmarks as they are planning to land in late 26, he added. More than ever, we will really witness the next miracles from SpaceX and Starship. Please respond with let's do it in the comments section if you are also interested in this. Then like, share, and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's development journey. Despite these hurdles, SpaceX continues to make incredible strides. The next step is proving Starship's refueling system in space, a technology essential for making life multiplanetary and ensuring humanity's future in space. Musk described this system, I mean, the fluid has to get from one ship to another somehow. Refueling in space is no simple task. Microgravity complicates fluid 
fluid transfer, requiring innovative solutions for connecting spacecraft and transferring fuel in orbit. Something never done before. Several potential methods are being explored, including using pumps or taking advantage of pressure differences between tanks. The success of liquid methane handling during the IM-1 mission earlier this year provided valuable insights, but actual ship-to-ship -ship refueling still needs to be demonstrated through multiple test flights. Currently, several ways can be applied. The first is to use pumps. The second is to take advantage of the movement of the ships to transfer fuel. The third is simpler and most likely to be applied, taking advantage of the pressure difference between the two ships to transfer fuel. Once this capability is demonstrated, another challenge for SpaceX will be to launch a lot of Starship tankers to be able to refill the main ship. The tanker flights will have to be carried out continuously for a short period. Therefore, it'll require a large number of prototypes and launchers to launch and land the boosters afterward. But SpaceX can be confident in these efforts on many bases. Besides having mastered the process of lifting off and initially returning, SpaceX also demonstrated the operation of liquid fuel in space once with the tipping point step in Flight 3 to transfer fuel from the header tank to the main tank. Although this is still different from transferring fuel from ship to ship, it's also considered an important facility. In terms of quantity, SpaceX is currently having a fast production rate as we can see in Ship 33. That will be accelerated exponentially when the Star Factory is actually in stable operation. After production, testing will also be ramped up as test stands are built and upgraded at the Massey test site. Then, the most important part, the launch pad, is ramping up. Pad B is under construction and is expected to be operational early next year. Plans to expand Starbase have also been proposed and more towers may be appearing in the future. Looking at Florida, plans for a launch and catch tower are also being reviewed and, if it comes true, it would combine with Starbase Texas to increase launch speeds to accommodate future needs, including refilling construction and operations. Beyond technical hurdles, regulatory approvals from agencies like the FAA have caused delays affecting Starship's testing schedule. Compared to many other vehicles, Starship is heavily affected by the FAA's regulations. The delays before Flight 1 and 2, and most recently Flight 5, have also slowed down Starship's progress significantly. One of the challenges SpaceX faces with the FAA is the changing nature of its flight missions, which is a necessary part of their iterative development process. While regulations are critical for ensuring safety and environmental protection, they've also slowed Starship's progress, impacting the timeline for key missions like Artemis. Many proposals, such as launching Starship 25 times at Starbase and 44 times in Florida, are at a dead end. This could affect the country's position, especially when China is still very close behind. I'm quite concerned about when SpaceX might attempt to catch the ship on the next flight and begin building the refueling system. Given the FAA's previous delays, it seems likely that they could slow down progress once again. Unfortunately, there's no way to be certain. In addition to the FAA, we also need to consider the environmental agencies, including FWS, TSEC, EPA, and Save RGV. These organizations often pose obstacles with penalties or lawsuits that slow down Starship's progress, some even aiming to push Starship operations out of Texas entirely. The controversy over the water dillage system before Flight 5 is a prime example. When Flight 5 was eventually approved, it became clear that the agency's objections were unfounded. Despite these challenges, SpaceX has successfully landed each stage of Starship. However, they'll need to conduct more launches to ensure reliability before building a refueling system and advancing toward the Moon and Mars. Time is running short to achieve these ambitious goals, so immediate action is critical. Only through bold, decisive changes can we hope to meet these milestones on schedule. It can be said that Flight 5 has really opened up a lot of futures for Starship and SpaceX in particular, and humanity in general. We've slowly been able to envision the most extraordinary scenarios for space exploration. In these missions, the literal power source, fuel, will be the central factor determining whether we can launch, how far we can go, and if we can make it back. While the physical challenges are significant, they're not beyond the reach of brilliant minds. The real obstacle lies in the bureaucratic delays. The slow movement of paperwork between desks is what's truly holding back Starship from flying. However, SpaceX has every reason to be confident in its accomplishments thus far.
In the near future, we can expect to see successful landings of both stages of Starship, followed by the construction of a refueling system. The road ahead is full of possibilities, so let's prepare to break through the next set of boundaries. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.